Hey everybody, welcome back. We're going to get on the Z1R again and check the swing arm fitment and uh, hopefully progress forward on that. And then we can do some machining to machine the other parts that we're going to need for it. So let's get right to it. Let me show you exactly what I had done in regards to the welding and the clearance for that spot right there is this. And uh, the welder did a nice job on the wells, probably too much, uh, but uh, you know, rather have too much than too little, of course. That's what she said. And then what we'll do is have to maybe grind some away on this side here. But anyway, I pressed the bearing in, but we have a problem. And I kind of suspected this was going to happen, which may negate and stop this project right in its tracks. This hole has become out of round because of the heat, the welding. So the bearing went in no problem, but I can't get the sleeve in because now the bearing is following that out of roundness. And you can see down here it goes in just fine but on this one it's out around I could kind of see it when I held the needle bearing up to this but I figured I'd try it at least and it went in fine I pressed it no problem but um, unfortunately the bearing does not have enough rigidity to counter that and so what we have now is we have it's too tight so I suspect it's high on this side or tight on this side if you will depending on if you're looking at the outside or the inside yeah, it's unfortunate because I know the customer really, really wanted to use a swing arm, but, um, you know, he told me that this was going to be a direct fit, and it's not. So, you know, I'm doing the best I can with it, so we may have to scrap this um, this project, this part of the project at least, and just go back to the stock swing arm and then build up our rolling chassis. If only there was a machine in existence that you could put things like this on that you could precisely and with great precision bore holes that are truly round or correct out of rounded holes it is such a machine in existence if there was we could probably do something with this alrighty then we're about what, an hour and a half later or so and I got an interesting setup here but I'm pretty much ready to put the cutter in I just ground a, a bit I'll show you what I did this thing is really out of round I mean this is not a tense indicator but it um, is pretty sensitive this old Sterrett this is a last word Sterrett. I don't mean Sterrett's the last word. You know, uh, Mitsutoya is pretty good too. But So this thing's all around the board here. Um, essentially, there's my real... Let's see, what would that be? Right about there. Actually, about right there is the lowest spot. Right about there. And it comes up higher. Yeah, so... Well, right back there is the lowest spot, so I'm going to mark that because I'm going to end up setting this tool toward the lowest spot and then work my way out. There's really no adjustment. I have that kind of boring bar. Let me show you the setup nonetheless. So back here, this is definitely, <laughs> whoops, this is definitely a uh, reminiscent of a recent Blondie Hacks uh, a setup when she was, she's doing a steam engine thing pretty big for her small equipment. So I kind of thought about that and said, well, if she can do it, Quinn, then I can do it too. So <laughs> go look at that last video and you'll see what I mean. And But I've got it really clamped down, shimmed up with feeler gauges, just some double stack of parallels laying flat instead of the way they normally lay. Because there's a, there's a threaded boss down underneath here. Kind of hard to see, but it's right back there and it's a little blurred right over there. I put a bolt in that and I'm using that to adjust this as well so I'm kind of forcing it against itself hopefully it doesn't bend a damn thing or twist it up I don't think it would I mean hell it experiences a hell of a lot more forces doing its job on a motorcycle so you know they're designed to flex of course these aluminum jobs so I'm hoping that that'll be the case I have it as concentric as I can get it and we're talking of course the X and the Y axis so it's kind of like on a lathe you do one side and then you do the other and if you have variances, you just essentially go off of this way and this way. So it's kind of like a plus sign. I'm figuring that the low spot, if this is 12 o'clock, that's the low spot. And there's a higher spot over here, which would be about 8 o'clock. And that's where the weld is here, the way the dial indicator is reading. That's what I'm going with. I'm sticking to it. But we have to consider we have a Z-axis to deal with as well. So, you know, we have a bore to go down into. So what I've done here is I have it pretty good going up and down. Almost dead nuts. I'd say it's within a thou each way because, of course, I did it this way at the 12 o'clock and then at the 3 o'clock and just getting an idea. And, of course, I did it over here at 6 o'clock too. 
and to get an idea of where we're at. So we're pretty good there. So I'm not too worried about that. So the objective here, of course, is to just touch off with a tool on the lowest spot or wherever the lowest spot appears itself once we start spinning the thing. And I can make adjustments at that point because um, I can do some very light test cuts on the outer edge. I can, I'm going to be machining some end spacers. If this all works out anyway, I can just make them fit whatever size it is at that particular point. But in the middle of it, that's where the bearings got to go. And hopefully it will correct this, but don't know. Never did it before. At least, uh, you know, not on this setup. Back in the day, yeah, but these were big castings with uh, with a 52-inch with a table horizontal boring mill and a 6-inch spindle, you know, back in the old days. So anyway, this is where we're going to go with and see what happens. Uh, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the tool loaded up. The the uh, boring bar I'm using off of the, um, the lathe is just a homemade job. Um, like this, this will be the tool. Uh, I'll go over that here in a second is uh, this shank is metric and I thought it'd be about eight mil so I'm using the 5 16 collet. It's a little bit small for the collet but it does tighten it up. If the if the bar runs out a little bit it's not a big deal because it's still going to be going around in a circle. So let's talk about the tool grinding. Uh, when you're doing soft materials we don't want to have a tremendous amount of rake on this just a little bit and so I just have a little bit on both sides and of course the uh, uh, backwards rake as far as the end of the tool goes for clearance you know clearance clearance and so what I'm going to, what I did with this is um, I just took a blank that was on, there was a tool ground on the other side and this was a blank end. So I just ground it myself, honed the end of it with a stone and um, hopefully she's going to work out just fine. We'll see. I got you in as close as I can get and I went ahead and applied some Dicom Blue to the inside of the bore here, some layout fluid so we can see what's going on. I'm going to go ahead and get this down close with the manual quill and then uh, we'll use this like I said earlier this micro feed part of it you can't quite see it but I'm gonna have to really concentrate on doing an even feed but who knows this may not work it may chatter like a mother a mobile uh, I figured 920 rpm or 940 is probably gonna be pretty good for this I probably will probably will will use some um, WD on this but I want to see where it's cutting first so uh, let's give it a shot seems a little too much. I'm going to take my indicator over here, my decator indicator, put it up on that tool and back that off, uh, I don't know, let's say 5,000 um, because it seems to be hitting more than I wanted it to. So it's going to be a trial and error thing to start with, but that's that's definitely taking too much. So um, I don't want to bore it out that big. It'll slip through like, it'll slip through like a wore out, um, yeah, I can't say that on YouTube. Okay, stand by. All right, that's about 6,000, I think it is now. Something like that. So that would be um, 12 total. That's six on a side. But uh, I'm counting that it's cut, cutting that big, actually. I'd rather go small and have to bump it out. All right, good. So we're not hitting it all now. All right, so you see we're not hitting it all now, not even the slightest bit. So that's good in a way, because now what I can do is I can move it back out a little bit, maybe three, four thousandths, and then see where it's hitting. Because now I have a reference, as uh, before I really didn't know where I was hitting. Safety squints engaged. They've been engaged all along, by the way. Okay, so I added three. I think I hear it just hitting. Yep, and it's hitting exactly where um, I said it would, right about over here. So it's definitely hitting. Um, you know what? It's just scraping off that high spot. Let's just go ahead and run with that. Run with that for now. See what happens instead of adjusting it. You know, As my old man used to say, "Don't take off too much," because today I forgot my putting on tool. So. Let's uh, let's do that. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of uh, W Dirt 40 to it and see what happens. Wherever the hell I put the thing, here it is. If it was a snake, I'd be dead. Of course, it would have to be a venomous snake. But that's another that's another discussion. <sighs> I 
Well, it's nice to know I had enough reach. I didn't check that before. Yeah, see, it just took out over here a little bit. Let me show you what it looks like. It was all painted up. Nice. See a little bit of chip production? I'm trying to make a production out of this, but you know what I'm saying. Now, another thing I can do is I can mic up that out, outside diameter of the bearing and then see how that relates to this newly formed surface. In fact, I think I will do that with a snap gauge and a mic and see where we're at, and I'll come back at that point. Bearing is 1.301 Imperial. This is 1.300 on the schnoz. Let's go at a different angle of the dangle. Yeah, it's definitely going to be tighter because it's just out of round so badly. Yeah, it's 296. The thing is just so far out of round, that's the problem. The question is whether or not we can remove enough material, uh, you know, around it almost completely to get that bearing to go in without being a problem again. So you can see that it still wants to rock. You see how it's rocking right there? So with that rocking right there, it tells me it's going to do the same thing. So I'm going to open it up. Um, oh, I don't know. Let's do like three thousandths, a thousandth and a half on the side and see how that works. If I can control it to that level, it's kind of difficult, you know, without some sort of a screw type adjuster like on a real boring bar to do that. But I'll figure it out. I always do. Plus three, as promised. Safety squints? Well, you know that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's try that. Here's where it looks now, adding that three thousandths. So a little swirl in there from bringing the tool back. I don't really care because I'm going to buff it out anyway by hand. Not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. Like I said, we'll do her by hand. So see how this starts, feels like it wants to start or not. Unfortunately, I have no way to press this in while it's in this setup and then try it and then press it back out, just no way. It still feels that way though, like it's very high over here. And I think I'm gonna keep going out until we just start to hit over here, just a little bit on the opposite side, because I just don't think it's gonna still work, or I just don't think it's gonna work yet. We're closer though, it's definitely starting to fit better. So let's see, I'll go out another three and see what happens. You know, I'm going to do two instead. I'm going to do two thousandths, so that'll be a total of four. So two, two thousandths on a side, not three. All right, two and a skosh. Close enough. See what that does for us. Or does nothing. Or totally screws it up. Either way, we're having fun. So that's looking pretty good. It's taking a little bit over there and more over there. I'm going to run with this and see what happens. It is assuming I got it centered right and it hasn't moved. Scrap anyway, so why not try it? Here's how it looks now. So you got way more over there. And you got some over there and at the bottom, you see? See, that feels pretty good. That feels like it wants to start. And it doesn't seem like it's rocking, you see? Maybe a tiny, tiny bit. Just a little, little bit. I'll tell you what, I'm going to do another thousandth and a half if I can adjust this finitely with the dial indicator. Run it through. And I... I'm not going to film that because you've already seen it twice now. And then 
I'll uh, come back and we'll see how this fits because it really wants to go now and it seems like it's going pretty even but I think it needs just a skosh more because it just seems to want to rock a little bit you know it's rocking at this uh, axis essentially so it really shouldn't want to rock at all Let's take a look at that cut ooh that badass yeah the finish is great real happy with the finish like I said I'm gonna polish it by hand or on a spinny gizmo on my drill just to clean all that out and buff it up a little bit but the main thing is is our size good and you know bigger is usually better and more desirable but not in this case that's so I'm told let's see what we got probably too big no well, maybe not so does it rock that way about as much as it rocks this way I'd have to say yes maybe a skosh more but I don't want to go too much more because I'm kind of worried about it being too big because I can start to get it in all, you know, pretty easily right now. You know what we'll do? We'll do the rest of it by hand because I think we're true enough. And we'll just, I'll just run a hone through it like a little engine hone. I'll have to break the setup. Well, I don't really have to break the setup. I could keep the setup good. In fact, that's what I'll do because all I need to do is recenter on that hole. It'll be much easier with the hole truer. So I won't break the setup right now. I'll just unlock the tables, or the the X, to, you know, I'll unlock the X, left and right, and swing this sucker over to the side, and then um, run a hone down through it, and we'll see how it fits then. And that'll clean up some of that dicum in there and so forth, and we'll see how it is. That way I don't have to break the setup, and like I said, I can always just pick it back up with the indicator and do it again. UPS just came, so the doggy just got a treat from the nice UPS lady. There he is. <laughs> Gonna get his treat from the UPS. Thank you. Just a little bit. I'll polish it by hand then afterwards because these stones are not as fine as I would like. Like I said, I can polish it with some Scotch Braid on a doohickey that I have. I just want to I just want to clean that up a little bit. Yeah, I don't like the finish of that one, but unfortunately, it's not designed for aluminium anyway. See, I think that's going to work. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and run a, um, a Scotch Brite through it on the same drill, and then we'll take a look at it. And I think we're going to break it down at that point. We'll try it. Oh yeah, look at that. That's sweet. It really feels like it wants to go evenly. I think it's time just to bite the weenie and uh, disassemble this setup and press it in. If it doesn't work, I'm probably not going to be able to do any more to it. We'll just scrap the this swing arm project at that point. Or I'll just keep honing it till it does, maybe. I don't know. But I think that we've corrected the severe outer roundness from this weld here. And then um, if I can get this in in the actual, you know, sleeve that goes over the axle, there's a, there's a bearing sleeve and then the axle fits in, which it did before. Um, then we'll try putting it on and make sure everything's still concentric because even though I indicated it in, you know, because the thing was so out of round and so cattywampus, who knows, they may not be concentric anymore. But let's think positively. Hopefully it's, it's going to work. So let me go ahead and break the setup down. Off camera, I'll go ahead and press that in and then uh, we'll take a look at it. All right, it's pressed in. I pressed out the other one as well earlier, but um, that's because I just didn't want to get all full of chips. All right, this is the one that we did. Obviously, the welds right there. So let's see what we got. Oh, 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 oh! Look at that, and perfect. Oh wow! See that would not go in at all. You saw that at the beginning of this. It just would not go in because it was distorting that uh, bearing so much. And this thing is in there pretty firmly. So yeah, I'm liking that. All right, let me push the other one in. And then the real test is we'll put the axle through with the spacers and make sure that everything's still lined up. All right, so there's that one. This is our weld side, of course. And the one that we did not touch. Now watch that not fit. Oh, of course it does. Maybe. Now, here's the moment of truth. Strangely satisfying. We want to make sure that she goes in and goes in across the other side without binding up. Do we have concentricity? 
Uh oh. It appears we do not. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, we're off a little bit, kids. Oh well. Yeah, she's tight. Yep. Well, I did the best I could with it, so. I mean, she goes in, but we have to tap her in. Shouldn't be like that, but. Yeah, unfortunately, we are off. Let's see which way we're off. It appears to be this way. Yeah, that's. It's close, though, but. I don't know if we're close enough for that. Tell you what, let's put it through this way. Turn it up. And see which way it's off. Yeah, I can see it. It's. Well, here, let me show you. It's. Over to this side too much. If you look straight down at it. Yeah, unfortunately, that is probably not good enough. But. Tried our best. Tried our best at her. Well, I just don't know if we're going to be able to use this. Yeah, she's pretty far off. You can really see it with the spacer. Look at that. Oh well. Hmm. Let me think about it. Alright, I'm going to try one more thing. And here's my line of thinking. This is the side we board. This is the side that we didn't touch. Nobody touched it. Can't touch this. And you see, when this is in, you have a decent amount of play here. Back and forth. On this one, have like none. And that's because this hole is still small. I think if we open this hole up just with that hone again and polish it again, we may be able to save this after all. Because this is still, I mean, it's not tight like snug. It is just barely clearance fit. There is definitely more play in this one than there is in this one. And that could be throwing us off enough where it can't go through. You know, well, obviously we can beat it through, but we don't want to do that. So I'll stuff a rag in this one. We'll press this one out again. And uh, I'm going to clean it up and put it back in and we'll try it then. Because we may be able to still use it. Because it did press in pretty tight still compared to what, you know, it, it was about the same, I should say, as when it was before I even touched it. And you think that after opening it up like that, it would be easier. So I'm going to open it up a little bit more with a hone and polish it out and we'll see. Well, she's tight, but I can get it in by hand and out again, by hand at least. She's a little tight. And we're not doing anything to the um, pivot. This is the original uh, G, uh, GPZ. What the hell am I thinking? This is the original Z, uh, Z1R pivot, you know, for the swing arm. Cut myself. And so, uh, you know, we don't want to damage that. But it's probably the same as a KZ1000. But regardless, I mean, we can, we can get it in and out pretty easily now. And it spins all right. So we may be able to save it. Like I said, this one was tight. So I just hit it with the hone and polished it up again, and, uh, you know, it has a little bit of freedom in there. Is it perfect? No, but this ain't going to the moon either. You know, we're not uh, doing it for NASA. So, ugh. yeah. All right, let me um, throw a little bit more grease on them, just for the hell of it, and then uh, we'll put it in the frame. Let me clear up some of this mess here with my fixturing, and then we'll see how everything lines up for clearance, because that's the whole thing here. We got to... Make sure that we've got, oh nice, we've got clearance for this thing to even fit. We may have done this all for nothing. Um, may still have to do some grinding or something here. I don't even know if it's going to be worth it, if it's going to be that problematic or with this pivot. I don't know until I try. Gee whiz. All right, I'll get right back to you. I think this is the side that the bolt goes through. All right. Oh, no, that goes through okay. All right. And look at that. The important part is, even with this over pretty far, we have clearance. Right now, it's up against the uh, sleeve. The sleeve is um, holding it from going that way toward you. 
see if I can get a better angle of the dangle here to show you what I mean. So the sleeve is bottoming it out, but we got plenty of clearance there. No grinding necessary. Um, I want to um, check the center on this and see, I think it, you know, here's a dilemma. I think that to, in order to get this thing centered based on the numbers, when I put a piece of tape across here, pick up the center line and measure off the known reference on the side of the frame from my drawings, this thing needs to be all the way over this way to have that in the center. I don't know if I want to do that because I'm not going to have any, you know, space to put another, uh, you know, end cap on it basically, machine that and put it in. And I really need one because that's how I'm going to seal the end off. And so I'm not sure if we're just going to center it in the frame, maybe favor this way a little bit, and then use the wheel spacing to offset the wheel where it needs to be. Or, or what? I'm not really sure yet, but we may just have to design it with this thing essentially centered in the frame or maybe favoring this way just a skosh, like I said, and then um, figure out where we're going to go from there at a later time until, until I can get an engine in here and have an alignment to whatever wheels he wants to put on this thing. I'm just not going to know. I, I honestly think that this is going to be fine, though. It's, it's you know... <laughs> It's not spinning at 5,000 RPM. It just has to go up and down. And it's not going to wear significantly, even if there's a little bit of a cattywampus in there. So, you know, it's not binding. And once it's torqued down, because I'm going to be putting a spacer in the middle here to capture this axial load. I'm going to have to machine that separately. But I need to do the ends first, so I know how far this is going to be with these spacers are going to be resting. So there'll be, um, you know, a nice axial a platform, if you will, for the load to be put on um, from this uh, big long bolt once that's torqued down. We're getting kind of on the long side here, so let's just pick up a center here real quick and then see uh, where um, this thing's going to fall and, and see essentially how the rest of it's going to go. I got a center line on this swing arm. The old one centered out was six and seven eighths from referencing a straight edge across this. Uh, location for the, I believe this is for the mufflers, the original hangers here. Maybe the passenger foot pegs. I don't, I don't remember. Shit, it's been a long time since I took this apart. So six and seven eighths to the center, and geez, we're almost there right now. We're just about a six and three quarter. Yeah, but just a skosh under six and three quarter. Yeah, so we're an eighth of an inch off, and I think we're going to end up leaving it right there because with this place on this side, see, I have plenty of space where I could put a machine, you know, one of those end caps that'll be for that side, and then it'll be just a larger one over here. You know, that one's going to be a little bit bigger, but that's, that's the center line really close to it. I'd have to go a little bit further to the right, stage right, and I really don't want to do that. So the other thing we have, excuse me, boy, I got gas. The other thing we got to keep in mind here is locations of these shocks, where they fall. He wants to stick with the original ones here. Okay, if we stick these guys in, we're actually falling a little bit outside that. See, that there's another problem with this. It just you know, even when it's up here, like probably it'll be something like that. The majority of it's going to be, well, it's going to be right on the edge. I really wanted it more in the center. I can't really push these over. They have to go up and down straight. Hmm. Well, maybe we can do something with this. Yeah, because we got to leave enough space on the inside here for the uh, chain guard too. So I don't think we're going to be able to go inboard too much. Now think about it, how I'm going to do that with uh, aluminum to make the uh, blocks for that. I was kind of hoping more would be in the center. But they are fairly even like that. So, hmm. Yeah, what the hell. Alrighty, folks, that's going to be about it on this one. We had to do a bunch of corrective action on that swing arm. I was afraid that it was going to happen from the welding, and it did. Uh, didn't get it perfect, but I'm pretty sure, I'm very sure that it's absolutely usable. Is I don't have to beat that uh, pivot in. It'll go in. It's just very tight. So 
you know, for what this is going to be written and so forth, it's not going to stress them needle bearings out too much. So I'm not going to get stressed out about it. As long as you can put it together without using a sledge, I think we're okay. Uh, I just don't know where I'm going to go with the shock locations yet. I have to machine some sort of blocks for them. I got an idea in the noggin how I'm going to do that already just from looking at it now. And then fix the offset left to right on the swing arm by machining some spacers that go where the other ones went. They'll be different sizes, of course. And finally, that pipe that goes in between, it'll be a pipe out of the machine down that'll kind of make that linear or axial load possible when we tighten the nut on the other side. Otherwise, it'll want to collapse the frame, and we don't want to do that at all. <laughs> that would suck. So speaking of suck, I hope this video didn't suck because to try to work really hard to make this work. Um, I'm a perfectionist, so I'm going to work at it until I at least get it. The customer really wants the swing arm, so I'm really trying to accommodate the best I can. The easy way would have been to say, it won't work. We'll just use the other one, throw it all together. But sometimes the easy way isn't the right way. The right way for you is to leave a comment, is to subscribe, like the video, ring the bell on the channel, you get notified when I put more up like this. So until next time, don't just repair, restore. Catch you on the next one.